right, so I just want to say a few words quickly in my five minutes about a specific uh, investigation I've done sort of on a broad set of questions. And that broad question is, how quantum is quantum field theory really? And by that, I mean, if you wanted a full description of a quantum field, you have to solve for a wave functional, which is a horribly, horribly infinite dimensional thing you have to go solve for. Or say you did a simple thing and lattice your field theory, you're now solving for a wave function of the number of variables equal to your lattice site. Now, this is computationally infeasible for any system you can think up. So you might want to ask, are there any situations where something that I think is very quantum mechanical is actually being produced by, instead of solving for a full wave function, replacing quantum field theory with classical statistical field theory? And by that, I mean one of, one of the two things that quantum mechanics does for you is you have the uncertainty principle. So if I went around and measured an actual field configuration, I could never measure it to be perfectly homogeneous. There are always little fluctuations in it. Okay. So suppose that I'm going to just say I have a statistical field theory where the statistics are being determined by the uncertainty principle. And after this, I'm going to completely forget quantum mechanics is a thing. Okay. Everything's classical evolution after that. And so I will be talking about this in a specific setup, which is uh, vacuum decay. And for those of you who don't know what this is, we imagine that we have a fluid or a field or something, okay, and in some large region of space, this thing is sitting in a metastable state, okay? Now, if you had purely classical physics and no fluctuations, the thing would just sit there forever, okay? But what quantum mechanics is supposed to do is instead of being stuck in the metastable state, you can decay. And the way this decay happens is that you will nucleate bubbles, all right? And so at different points in space, we'll have bubbles nucleating all over the place. And then you have an obvious question of what causes these bubbles to form? Where do they come from? And the standard interpretation is that a bubble nucleation is a tunneling event in quantum mechanics, okay? So you do some through the barrier tunneling event. It has absolutely no description classically. There's no way you can run a, a, an actual time evolution of this thing. And so someone who's actually watching the false vacuum decay would have no way of sort of predicting where these bubbles come from. You can just turn this around on its head and ask, okay, what if I try to do a, a statistical field theory approach to this? So what we're gonna do is take our, lattice our field theory, and now we're just gonna say, okay, someone came along, they looked at the false vacuum, there were a bunch of fluctuations in it, I'm gonna realize that. So an entire field configuration you've realized, okay? And I'm gonna push go and just solve with Ham Hamilton's equations. So purely classical motion. And when you do things like this, you will get results like this figure here. And so the key thing is the blue is the thing is sitting around this metastable state. The red is it has decayed out of that metastable state. And this is in one plus one dimensions, so a bubble is like a domain wall and another domain wall, and they will start to move apart from each other, okay? So this red thing here is a bubble, all right? And you can do this for another field configuration. You'll see the same thing happens. The bubble will be in some different place. You do it for another field configuration. The bubble will move around again. And so this is basically a proof of concept that the false vacuum can decay just from statistical fluctuations. You might then ask the question, what is the decay rate? And so the tunneling interpretation comes from a calculation that you can do about the rate that these bubbles are supposed to be nucleating, okay? And you get some prediction. So you can go figure out what that prediction is, and you'll get these two lines here. Uh, there's one small uncertainty, depending on how you model some horrible fluctuation determinant, okay. Uh, so you can go do the, the calculation from the tunneling thing, and you can also just say, I'm gonna measure where these bubbles nucleated in a bunch of simulations, okay? So you run many, 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 many lattice simulations, figure out the decay rate out of that, and you get this orange curve, which, this is an exponentially sensitive quantity that is being plotted here, so this is really, 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 really good agreement. Okay, and I have 20 seconds left, so I think I'll just leave it there. Uh, <laughs> here's an example of, of getting a semi-classical description of, of a tunneling process that is normally thought as extremely, extremely quantum mechanical.